this is the Social Distance Reading Series, a project of the Vermont School and Green Mountains Review. I'm Angela Horace Hills, and my debut collection of poems, Louder Birds, uh, was selected by Tracy Brimhall for the Lena Miles Weaver Todd Poetry Prize. It was published in February by Pleiades Press and distributed by LSU Press. Thank you so much for joining me today in my living room uh, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. My cat was just sitting in his tree back here. I'm sure he'll be back uh, to cough up some hairballs or do his weird raspy meow in my face while I read. Oh, speak of the devil. Um, poems from this book have appeared in Kenyon Review Online, um, Best New Poets, Memorias, among other journals and anthologies. And my work has been supported by a Sustainable Arts Foundation, Key West Literary Seminar, and Writers Room of Boston. Um, I'll be reading for about 15 minutes. Um, so again, thanks for joining me and apologize in advance if my cat interrupts because that's his, his deal. That's how he is. Retrospective. A girl stands barefoot beside a wheelbarrow, shoulders bare, holding a plywood sign that reads Zucchini and God in red paint. Her hair snarls in the wind and rain, but she doesn't notice. Like any sign, it's difficult to know how seriously to take it. The sky is gray. A cat darts from the field of corn and crosses the street, disappearing into the forest. Clouds drop from the sky and cover the grass, the fields, the trees. The boundaries between home and the road are insecure. It's impossible to navigate this landscape. We've all been in the presence of something dark and have chosen not to seek shelter. There are sirens. There will be sirens. Looking back, it's clear. The girl has disappeared. For now, the puddle remains unnamed so it is not yet a disaster. Nothing to undo that can't be done again. On the first day, we ripped carpet from the room's bones, rolled it like clay, stacked ourselves into man and ate eggs benedict in the breakfast nook. Light fell like a body through the ceiling onto our plates and we ate. Our neighbors were sleeping in our walls. We could hear them across fields. We tore the paper down, found we were equal parts inside and out as though we were the windows our neighbors looked into at night, as though our brights were on and no one would flash to warn us. On the third day, we laid our hammers on maps of places we'd been, tacked photos onto our cupboards. We'd forgotten plates and forks, took seriously what fruit flies confirmed about memory and sleep, we couldn't trust the water, slapping the shore downhill from a sea of corn. The oak fence was barbed in the backyard. When it fell, nobody called to tell us. Eagle, coyote, turkey. On the eighth day, the farmer shot them all and loosened the sheep's noose. His collie chased everything to pasture. when all around us sky and one perpetual flame. Then we must allow for answers in clouds, their shadows covering half the prairie, or crows swooping in and out of sunlight, searching for a perch. Yes, we could leave this place for another, build again by sea, let salt lick our lips, rub our eyes raw, but we'd miss the sweet nesting of storks on the foam pole by the landfill. How silent our lives without the hammering clatter of their bills before sunrise, the smell of loss rotting behind our house. 
watching them land, pick through chick chicken heads, fish skins, sausages, their ballet of wing splay and turn, the gentle tug of their bills as they pull apart, lift their necks and swallow, the delicate flight back to brood, disgorging of food, the nestlings eager to eat. Why should they leave this place? Already winter's unfurling, its clouds shrinking from the sun, the sky, just as everywhere as always. Listen to all the air we can hold when we prop these hand-drawn walls in place with our breath. Moose as Sign, S. Moose Sign. And the title is uh, after John Wilde, who is a Wisconsin painter. And it translates to, must it be, it must be. Because the moon is a wafer bleeding beneath my tongue and the desert is still sleeping, it must be. Tomorrow stands with its toes at the edge of a volcano, pouring a red mess of life from its stomach into the earth's pit. If the day's not picked apart, first by the bills of louder birds, I will tear into it like bread. This is how the rhythm of the earth's core will continue beating. Yes, it must be this light in my hair or the moon's muted halo through which the stars swim like minnows in a bait shop tub. It must be the weight of my face in my hands or the weight of the body hanging from the meat hook, watching with hollow eyes, waiting for a slip of the blade to release it. Maps of places drawn to scale. 10 minutes from a two week vacation, a van flips on an exit ramp. In a small town, the van is bigger. On the highway, it's just a van heading toward a hotel. This is global positioning. A man is ejected and the van lands on top of him. In a small town, a priest knows the man's name but death does not concern itself with formalities. It also does not take the man whole, only his legs and anything else it can grab below the waist. At a Chinese buffet, death is stuffing her cheeks with crab rangoons while a family stands behind her with empty plates. Nobody stuck to the vinyl booth finds you will suffer inside their cookie but it's implied in the parking lot. A child breaks free from her mother's arms and runs headfirst into traffic. In the city, there are always detours, but in a small town, there's one name for each baby born and eventually it's on the lips of everyone in the street. preserving. I can spend a whole winter in the summer of these lemons if they're covered in enough salt. Trucks are salting the roads so I can drive. Men salt the earth so I can walk without falling. When I fall, I catch myself with my face. When I fall, I go to the hospital to make sure the baby is still alive. There are so many small things to worry about in a large way. How much coffee should I drink? For every bean ground, someone is having sex or a child is starving. How do I know? Because I'm always reading warning labels or watching children pick dandelions near the slide. Except they are never dandelions, but toads and the children pick them up and throw them into the pond by the handful, believing they are frogs. 
And we can't blame them for not knowing what swims, what sinks, what floats. At the periphery where life hums, a white box is not the house. The house is not white. The house cannot be separated from the white barn, which is also not white because the wood is rotting and its silo is silver. The beige formica table on its chrome legs cannot be removed from the kitchen. There are always oatmeal cream pies in the cupboard, but the children can leave and have left and she remains with her mind separating into blue and red. Now, someone must be paid to remove the pins from her gray hair and tie her shoes. There is an illusion of life when the colors connect. The doll she carries in her arms is the memory of all her children. She hums to them, she still hums, though they have grown and gone, and she cries, and in the corner, Mary is mourning, and the Bible is always open to a page. She may know the words by heart. She may not understand them at all. Today, the pages are blank. The Bible cannot be removed from the house. The house is not white. The garden is not green. The apples hang heavy and will soon collapse, covering the ground. On earth as it is in heaven, Days after my mom finishes radiation, she's in Vegas on a Harley. It's 80 degrees and she sends selfies with cocktails in the sun. Here, everything is beginning to thaw. The body of ice thunders and pings and cracks in its undoing. When I was young, I believed the lake froze through completely, along with the creatures inside. Glass-eyed fish, bug-eyed frogs, painted turtles with wrinkled legs and necks stuck outstretched. But then the lake was pocked with shanties and men in orange hats and snowsuits hoisted northern pike up through icy holes, their shiny bodies struggling as they were pulled by the lips into sky. The idea of heaven is ridiculous and comforting and full of misdirection. In that same winter of my childhood, my grandpa landed his plane on the lake. A few days later, his friend learned he had brain cancer and shot himself. The funeral home was covered in yellow lilies, white roses, but his wife was not relieved. In the basement of the church, we ate ham and potato casserole and prayed holding hands. All year long, we filled our freezer with fish, sun warming us at the kitchen sink as my mother slipped her knife into their bodies, peeling away their skin, slicing their flesh into pieces. I have just two more. <clears throat> Controlled burn. The doe ran into the road, flipped over our hood, and dragged her back legs across the highway into woods. The same day, they were killing a man in Oklahoma who wouldn't die. They were deciding when to try again, and men in masks and bright orange suits set fire to the marsh the burning flesh of milkweed and switchgrass. We are told to be fruitful. We are told to rejoice. The next day, a hospital bed is set up in the front room of the farmhouse whose roof might collapse at any minute, as though the heavens are aware of the weight of a minute, as though each minute responds solely to the sky. It's illegal to follow an injured deer into woods with a gun. 
but is it okay to tell a child about heaven if you don't believe it exists? Yes sing the chorus frogs, who'd burrowed into the heart of the marsh to escape the flames. No, hisses the body of a vole squashed flat, perfectly filling a crack in the blacktop. In the beginning. The names we create for the people we build of sticks and mud and snow. The houses we fashion for them to live in. The weather they must survive. All of it slipping. The baby we implant in the dirt womb of a stick woman. The fetus slipping. The huts we build on riverbeds. The mud pies we force into baby's mouths. The tongue slipping lullabies in which we swaddle them, rocking boughs in the wind and the breaking, breaking. We must build a shelter, collect scrap and wood, blankets to save the bodies, imagine trees, cut the limbs, rebuild the bridges, trust the sun to hold us and not shine too keenly, to keep still as we gather buckets of water, the surface rippling with heat, we will feed it to the people. We will wash ourselves in light. Thank you again for joining me this wonderful day. I don't even know what day it is. Maybe it's Thursday, Friday? It's Friday, this Friday. Um, it's been great to have some kind of weird social interaction with my phone today. Um, again, my book is Louder Birds um, out with Pleiades Press. You can purchase it at the Pleiades Press website. Right now they have 20% off if you use the code BOOKS2020, so you'll get a discount there. Um, you can also get it at uh, LSU Press website um, if you're looking for a lot of books and that happens to be your thing. Um, oh, and I'm going to recommend a couple of books. I'm reading a ton of really great books because so many really great books are coming out right now. Um, and so I will just mention two that I happen to have nearby me right now that I'm really digging. Um, the first one is Forever War by Kate Gaskin. That's out from Yes, Yes Books. It's actually not out yet. It's going to be um, out, I think, in April, which is not too far away. But I got this copy from the virtual book fair ahead of time. So lucky me. It's really great. Check it out. And then I'm also reading Catechesis, uh, a pastoral by Lindsay Lesby, which is out with the University of Utah Press um, and is gorgeous inside. There are all of these textual art pieces alongside poems, and um, it is definitely just like as an object, a wonderful thing to have. Yeah, so those are two books that I definitely recommend. Um, down below on the website, uh, Green Mountains Review website, you will see a question and answer se session with me. Um, and I think those, I'm just like gonna look over at my checklist quick. I think that's all I got. Um, thank you so much again for hanging out, for staying inside and for supporting poetry. Enjoy the rest of your time in your house with your loved ones or on your own. See you later. Mm -hmm.